One day, a man was walking along the beach when he noticed a boy picking up something and gently throwing it into the ocean. Approaching the boy, he asked, What are you doing? The youth replied, Throwing starfish back into the ocean. The sun is up and the tide is going out. If I do not throw them back, they will all die. Son, the man said, Don't you realize there are miles and miles of beach and hundreds and thousands of starfish. You can't make a difference. After listening, the boy politely, gently picked up another starfish and threw it back into the ocean. Then smiling at the man, he said, I can't make a difference to all of them, but I made a difference to just this one starfish. This is a short story by Lauren Esley. I'm sure many of you have heard this story. You must have come across this in some books. But this is a story worth telling and retelling yourself as many times as you can. And there are many ways I think the story is related to the work that you all have been doing, preparing for the UPSC, preparing for the examination, standing at the edge of the syllabus and looking at the possibilities of what can be asked to you. It is very, very scary, daunting. It is a proposition that most people will avoid and run away from. Look at a syllabus. Economy, polity, world history, uh, ethics, science and tech, defense, international affairs, political developments, just about anything under current affairs. And then you must add optional English, CSAT, reasoning. To that you must add writing skills. It's a huge ocean that you're looking to cover. And the story about starfish is not just about doing your best to the extent you can. It's also about not getting scared about the endless possibilities, not getting scared about the huge amount of distance you have to cover in such preparation. You must take up your task slowly, take up your task with purpose, break down your task into small, small milestones you must achieve. In my years of teaching experience, what I realize is most of you, and that probably includes even us teachers when we start off, we are too scared about the huge amount of work to be done. I have students coming to me almost regularly and asking me if one book is enough, if the notes are enough, if one magazine is what they can rely on, on and continue. They ask me if it's just enough to read probably one website or one article. No, it's not. This examination has no upper limits. The examination does not have any boundaries which you can define with certainty. And just taking the analogy of the starfish and the ocean and the boy once again. It makes sense for the boy not to try to throw all the starfish into the ocean. He can start with what's convenient. Probably the starfish which are near the water. It will take him less effort to throw those starfish back. It makes more sense if he can throw the starfish which are more around him rather than walk a long distance for more and more starfish. Similarly, when you are looking at preparation for the vastness of the UPSC examination, you also can have a strategy how to approach the vastness of the syllabus. For example, pick up those topics which you are convenient with, you are comfortable with to start. Pick up sources which are around you. Have a sense of picking up and doing things in a way which you can revise and you can recall a bit more easily. So there is a strategy for everything. In fact, strategy matters when things are daunting. Strategy matters when things are boundless, when you have less of certainty about how to move on. So of the three things that I said is number one, have a priority. Now, this is something that you learn with time, that not all type of information, not all type of books are equally important. Have a priority. Pick up things that are, seem to be more important, more critical. Do those first. Second, in your preparation, have a method where you can keep jotting down and noting things so that you can revise and you can recall things afterwards. And third, very important part of strategy is plan specific milestones. 
you have about three, four months or one month or maybe one year. Prepare in terms of milestones. What is the approach that you would, have, would want to have to cover the entire width? And maybe milestones like 10 days milestones, 15 days milestones, one month milestone. By when do you want to finish off some basic readings? By when do you want to finish off some basic books? So it requires some amount of planning to go about the whole process. I think uh, one common error that students make is they dive into the syllabus straight away, they enter coaching center straight away and start reading and studying, or at least start the process without really knowing the boundaries that could have been set before the process had begun. So the starfish analogy, take up small things, take up doable things. Don't get scared by the vastness that you have around you. And to conclude this small conversation, I'll read out another story. This story is from a very famous book. I believe most of you must have heard about it, if not read. Chicken Soup for the Soul, a book written by Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen. So listen to this as I uh, read a few lines from this book. The story is about a young man who grew up in a ranch with his father. And he essentially was one of the horse trainers. And this is what the story it says. It goes back to a story about a young man who was the son of a horse trainer who would go from stable to stable, racetrack to racetrack, farm to farm, ranch to ranch, training horses. As a result, the boy's high school career was continually interrupted. When he was a senior, he was asked to write a paper about what he wanted to be and do when he grew up. That night, he wrote a seven-page paper describing his goal of someday owning a horse ranch. He wrote about his dream in great detail. He even drew a diagram of his 200-acre ranch, showing the location of all the buildings, the stables and the track. Then he drew a detailed floor plan for a 4,000 square feet house that would sit on the 200-acre dream ranch. He put a great deal of his heart into the project and handed it to his, paper, to his teacher. Two days later, he received his paper with a feedback that said, meet me after class and a grade in red F, which meant basically failed or rejected. The boy with the dream went to see his teacher and asked, why did I receive an F? The teacher said, you have no money. You come from a worker's family. You have no resources. Owning a ranch requires a lot of money. You have to buy land, pay for the breeding stock. You'll have to pay for a large stud fee, a stud farm. And there's no way you could ever do it. Then the teacher added, if you will rewrite this paper with a more realistic goal, I will consider your grade. The boy went home and thought about it long and hard. He asked his father what he should do. His father said, look, son, you have to make up your mind. It's your dream. It's your writing. However, think, because this is perhaps the most important decision for you that you will make. Finally, after sitting with it for a week, the boy turned in the same paper with no changes at all. He stated, sir, you can keep the F but I'll keep my dreams. The best part of the story is, 20 years later, the same teacher brought 30 kids to a camp. The camp on a ranch that belonged to the same young boy who he had once failed. When the teacher was leaving, he said, look son, I will tell you this now. When I was your teacher, I was something of a dream stealer. During those years, I stole a lot of kids' dreams. Fortunately for you, you had the gumption and the courage not to give up on your dreams. Don't let anyone steal your dreams. Follow your heart no matter what. This examination, this career that you want to choose for yourself is just one of those dreams. So all of you, this career path that you have chosen for yourself, the UPC examination, the administration, and I'm sure 
much more beyond this is all your dreams. There are times when we look around us for people to support and encourage us through our dreams. But nobody can really know what you're dreaming and how much you feel for your dreams. The dream is yours. You'll have to work for it. But yes, be aware of dream stealers. It could be just about anybody. Sometimes your best friends, maybe unintentionally. It could be your relatives. It could be your parents too. I have students coming and asking me, Sir, tell us, now that you have seen so many students, do you think we have the capacity and the capability of qualifying? And my answer always is, it's not for me to judge. It's your dream. It's your vision. It's something that you have seen for yourself. Two analogies to work with. The starfish take things one at a time, slowly, purposefully, gradually, break up the bigger uh, goals, break up the bigger tasks and approach it in small manageable ways. And each small step you take will matter eventually. And don't stop dreaming. I can always add, work towards your dream too, but avoid dream stealers. All the best, keep preparing. Thank you.